now. Um, Minister Brenda has been, for the last uh, several weeks, has been, uh, in her exhortation, has been talking about spiritual warfare. And we're going to continue <coughs> talking about... Uh, okay, Anita, uh, uh, mute, please. Uh, we're going to we're going to continue um, the the exhortation on spiritual warfare tonight, uh, and uh, when Minister Brenda comes back next week, she can continue this. Uh, something I read yesterday. Let me start with something I read yesterday. Something I read yesterday in a in a uh, devotion that I have one of the devotions that I read every morning. It says faith is the force of God's kingdom, and fear is the force of Satan's kingdom. Faith is the force of God's kingdom, and fear is the force of Satan's kingdom. Uh, as we know, spiritual warfare, and Minister Brenda has talked about this a little bit. Spiritual warfare actually consists of struggling against evil forces in our minds. The Bible is clear that spiritual warfare is not a battle which is fought in the physical realm, but it's a, it's a war that's fought in the spiritual realm. That's why it's called spiritual warfare. If you remember, our, uh, one of our scriptures is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And um, I'm reading from the uh, Holman Christian Standard Bible, and it says... For our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the world powers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. And then there's another scripture that, that, that kind of fits the same mode. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 6. And that's this. Uh, and this time I'm reading from the King James Version. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means they're not natural, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, so these principalities, powers, rulers of darkness that uh, Paul talked about in Ephesians are all spiritual beings, and they're actually the troops in Satan's army. Now, remember now that Satan is a created being, and Satan's not omnipresent, so Satan can only be in one place at one time. So he works through these principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness so that they, he can attack and, 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 and fight on many fronts with, with many different people. So when somebody says to you that the devil is on my trail or Satan is doing this to me, it's unlikely that Satan himself is doing it but it's probably one of these spiritual troops or a power or principality or dump some demonic being of some sort. So we, don't, we shouldn't give too much credit to Satan uh, by saying that he's, he specifically is attacking us because he can't be attacking you and me and somebody else at the same time because he's created being. He can only be in one place at one time. Also, another thing we need to remember in, when we're dealing in spiritual warfare, uh, because what I want us to understand tonight, that the, that the mind is the actual battlefield of spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare takes place in our minds. Because Satan really has no authority to attack the believer physically without God's permission. Satan or his demons cannot attack you physically without God's permission. Now, the way we, we can say that with a surety is if you go to Job, let's go to Job, Job chapter 1, 
and we're going to start at verse 8. If you remember Job now, Job, Satan went to, to, to God uh, at, with, with the other angels, and God asked him what he was doing. Uh, and uh, Satan said he's, he's walking around checking out God's creation, in, the, in essence. So if we start at Job chapter 1, verse 8, it says this, then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? No one else on earth is like him, a man of perfect integrity who fears God and turns away from evil. Satan answered the Lord, Does Job fear God for nothing? Haven't you placed a hedge around him, his household, and everything he owns? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions, and, and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out, stretch out the hand and strike everything he owns, and he will certainly curse you to your face. Here's what God said to Satan. Very well, the Lord told Satan, everything he owns is in your power. However, you must not lay a hand on Job himself. So Satan left the Lord's presence. So at this time, Satan had no authority to attack Job physically. He could attack everything he had. You know, remember, Job lost his kids. He lost all of his wealth. Then later on, in chapter 2 of Job, in chapter 2 of Job, when Satan came back to God, chapter 2 of Job, verses 3 through 6. This is Job 2, starting at verse 3. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? No one else is like him, a man of perfect integrity, who fears God and turns away from evil, he still retains his integrity, even though you incited me against him to destroy him without just cause. Skin for skin, Satan answered the Lord, a man will give up everything he owns in exchange for his life, but stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones, and he will surely curse you to your face. Mm. Very well, the Lord told Satan, he is in your power, only spare his life. So it was only at that time was Satan allowed to attack Job physically? And if you remember his story, he ended up with, with, with boils on his skin and, and he wanted to die, essentially, because he was not physically un, under physical attack. So, remember this now, when we're con involved in spiritual warfare, remember what I said, that uh, the battlefield of spiritual warfare is in your mind. Right. So, unless God gives permission, Satan cannot affect your external circumstances. Where can he attack you though? He can attack you and injure you in your mind. If he can get you to believe that he or his demons can cause the bad things uh, that happen to you to happen to you, the next thing uh, that can happen is you start to doubt God and his promises. So the devil, since he can't attack you physically or externally without God's permission, he's got to do it in your mind. That's, so that's where the battlefield for spiritual warfare is. And I'm going to tell you a little later how you can deal with that. The devil wants to establish what are called strongholds in your life. Now strongholds are, uh, are something that are built on imaginations or thoughts. Remember when we, when we read the, the, uh, the verse in, in uh, 2 Corinthians, it says we could, uh, with our weapons we can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself uh, to, against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So a stronghold is anything that exalts itself in our minds pretending to be bigger, or more powerful than God. Uh, there's, a, there's a version of the Bible, the New American Standard Version, that calls, uh, calls a strongholds fortresses. Because a stronghold is anything that exalts itself in our minds pretending to be bigger or more powerful than God. The strongholds are built by the imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Uh, there's a minister I know who, who, who gives a definition of imagination as a nation of images. Imagination or a series of connected images that become a stronghold. 
Um, these imaginations can be a, a superstitious belief. It could be an addiction. It could be wrong thoughts. Uh, it could be uh, despair over loss. And they can co actually consume our emotions and cause us to become overwhelmed. Uh, if we, and if we try to ignore them, if we try to ignore these strongholds, we'll never be able to live the life of victory promised by Jesus. Now, the, so Satan's target, the tar Satan's target in this spiritual warfare is the mind. Because the most effective way to influence our behavior is to influence our thinking. Uh, on Tuesday night, Mikey talked about uh, the incident with, with, with Eve, Adam and Eve, and he also talked about the time that Jesus was tempted by Satan. Um, uh, Satan uh, uh, influenced Eve's thinking uh, when he said... Uh, uh, when he when when he said that uh, 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 well uh, let me go there Genesis chapter three verses two through five Genesis three two through five the woman said to the serpent we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden but the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden God said you must not eat it or touch it or you will die no you will not die Satan said to the woman in fact God knows when you eat it your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So he twisted what God said to Eve to get her thinking. So he, he attacked her mind. He try, actually tried this with Jesus. He tried uh, with Jesus when after Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. He said, hey, if you're the son of, you're the, you're the son of God, change these rocks in the bread so you can eat. So his attempt, he attempted mentally to get Jesus to, to, do, to, to do what he wanted him to do. He attacked Jesus' mind and he attacked Eve, Eve's mind because he did not have permission at that time to do anything externally to him. So if we, if we are attacked in our minds, if that's the if that's the battlefield for 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 uh, spiritual warfare, then you know in war or any kind of a fight, when you get attacked, then you design to come up with a counterattack. So what? How do we counterattack Satan in spiritual warfare? Well, let's go to if we all know this. Go to Ephesians chapter six. Verses 13 through 17. Now that's the same chapter in which uh, Paul said the battles against spiritual forces. He also tells us this. Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 17. And we all know this, but I'm going to read it. Uh, this is why you must take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to risk, resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. Stand therefore with, with truth like a belt around your waist, righteousness like armor on your chest, and your, feet sand, and your feet sandaled with readiness for the gospel of peace. In every situation, take the shield of faith, and with it you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, with all that armor, there is one piece of armor that we use in the counterattack, and that is the sword of the Spirit, which is God's Word. Um, to win the war against Satan, we have to take control of our thought life. We have to take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now we take those thoughts captive with the word of God that addresses those thoughts. When you identify and uh, an attack, uh, when you identify and attack a stronghold, so we've got these strongholds, so we've got a counterattack. When you identify what the stronghold is 
and you counterattacked it, you attack it with the word of truth that confronts that stronghold. And you got, so you, so you got to know the word. So we got we got to find it in the concordance of our Bible. And once we find that word, we've got to read it. We've got to speak it. Do whatever you do. Read it, speak it, sing it. You know, write it down and stick it on your mirror. Stick it on your refrigerator. Put it in your car. Just don't read it when you're driving. Put it in your car. But what we want to do is bombard the stronghold and destroy it. You remember uh, in the uh, the uh, the Second Iraq War, uh, they said that they want to want to go use sh uh, shock and awe, bum the thing out of existence with overpowering munitions. Well, that's what we got to do with these strongholds. We got to bombard them with the Word of God to destroy the strongholds. Now, and you know, there are a lot of strongholds that we have. And I'm just going to give us a few to, to kind of tell you how you can do this. Let's take some strong, a stronghold. Uh, uh, anger is a stronghold. All right? So, so let's, let's say we got that problem. Where anger is a stronghold. Here's, here's, some word, here's the word of God that we use to attack that stronghold. Psalms, so say, let's say if you got a stronghold of anger, I'm going to give you some scriptures to tear it down. Psalms 37, verse 8. Psalms 37, verse 8. That is... Is that again? Psalms 37, verse 8. This is, a, this is something to attack the stronghold of anger. What, what book? Psalms. Psalms 37. The 37th Psalm. And the 8th verse. And that says, stop being angry, turn from rage, do not lose your temper, it only leads to harm. Mm -hmm. Then there's another one, Proverbs 14, 29. People with understanding control their anger, a hot temper shows great foolishness. Ephesians 4, 26. Again, these are ways to fight the stronghold of anger, to, or not fight, to tear it down, to destroy it. Ephesians four twenty six. And do and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Yeah. Colossians chapter three verse eight. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. We don't have a lot of time, but I'm just kind of give you some examples. This is how we tear down the strongholds that Satan sets up in our minds on the, in, on the, the, the battlefield of spiritual warfare. I'm going to do fear, and then, we'll, and then we'll end. Fear. Let's say there's a stronghold of fear. You're afraid. Satan has caused you to be afraid of whatever it is. You're afraid. You're afraid to, 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 to move. You're afraid to go out. You're afraid to make a decision. You're just afraid. Uh, so Psalms 23 verse 4. You know this one. Mm -hmm. okay? Psalms 23 verse 4. When, when, you, when, when, you're, when you're attacked by fear and you want to destroy that stronghold. Psalm 23, verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, mm. I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall, So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? Psalms 118 verse 6. The Lord is the Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Amen. 2 Timothy 1 7. We know this one. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Now the, the same thing is true for anything else that exhausts itself up against the knowledge of God and that causes you to question 
God's love for you or to question your ability to withstand the attack from attacks from Satan. So uh, whether whether it's whether it's those strongholds or any other ones, remember this: you're gonna have imaginations and thoughts Amen. that will try to exalt themselves against the knowledge of God, and you're gonna have to fight and destroy them because they're gonna come to you, whether they're Satan or that whether they're they're a power or principality or one of his de demonic minions as as, as as minister brenda says minions that you're going to have them the only way to win because satan is strong yes. he's stronger than you are he's stronger than i am but he's not all powerful we have the one that's all powerful on our side and in and actually in us we have the Holy Spirit in us. So the only way to win is to use that power and use the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So to guarantee victory, we can, I can guarantee victory in spiritual warfare. So to guarantee victory, there's some things we got to do. We must love God's Word. We must know God's Word. We must memorize God's word as best we can. We must meditate on God's word. We must believe God's word. We must use God's word. And we must do God's word. We do all those things. The victory in spiritual war, in the spiritual warfare is guaranteed to you. So what we got to do now then is strap on our sword, which is the word of God. Strap it on and take the battle to the enemy. Counterattack and take the battle to him. Then we will have victory in spiritual warfare. So that ends our uh, exhortation tonight. Anybody have any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. oh, no, that's... that's good. Something like last week. Well, remember, yes, the enemy. Yeah, well, yeah, and remember this, remember this, remember this, that Satan cannot attack you physically without God's permission. So a lot of the physical stuff that happens to us is because it's something we are doing or not doing is Satan. And what, what, how Satan uses that in spiritual warfare is this. If, we, if it's something we're not, say we don't eat right and we get ill, right? Then that's not an attack from Satan. That's on us. But Satan will use that, though, to cause you to have some doubts about God's ability to care for you, about uh, some doubts about uh, uh, Satan being so strong that he can do whatever he wants to you. Those, that's not true. What we then do when you attack like that, what we do is then go to the Word of God, which tells us that 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 uh, uh, greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. Tells us that God will says He will never leave us or forsake us, so we're never alone. That's what we do to counterattack, and then. As the word says, what we are what we are encouraged to do, or told to do, is to resist mm -hmm. the devil, and he will flee. Yes. Now, when we're talking about counterattack, what that is, that's actually resisting the devil. It's not going out and beating up the devil because we can't. Amen. We don't have that kind of power. <laughs> so, what the Bible says is resist the devil, yes. and he will flee. That's what Jesus Amen. did. Jesus, who could have whipped the devil, mm -hmm. what Jesus did was resisted the devil with the word of God, Amen. and Satan left. That's what we've got to do, and that's how we win in spirit.